So today we've got a very special guest on the channel, another Blades YouTube channel, Blades Ramble in Jimmy. And I am very, very excited to talk about all things football and all things Sheffield United with him. And today, Jimmy, we're going to be talking about the enigma that is Sander Berger. I don't know if I've used the right word there because I might get some hate in the comments for that. <laughs> but let's get straight into it. So Sander Berger, at the moment, maybe not playing to the heights that he's, he's been playing at in the last couple of seasons. Do you think he's getting harshly treated by the fans because he's set such high standards for himself? No. I don't, um, and I've been equally as disappointed in him this season. And it sounds, it does sound harsh when you're talking about him like this, because obviously the frustration comes. We know he's got the ability, and you, you said that yourself. He's set those high standards himself. It's the consistency that's the concern. It's it's so frustrating to see a player of that caliber that we've seen him when he's further forward. It, at times, it's looked like men against boys when he glides past players. They can't get the ball off him, but. In recent games, and, and really most of this season, he'll be caught in possession. He's no awareness of who's around him. And it's so frustrating to know that... I think he's also suffering from similar to McBurney, really. Um, he can't help the price tag that he came for. And Brewster, obviously, to a lesser degree. And we haven't seen as much as Arian as we'd like. But McBurney, if, he hadn't, if we'd have signed him for two million quid, he wouldn't have come near anywhere. He wouldn't have got anywhere near the stick that he's got. Um, and it's the same with Sander. You come with that price tag, no fault of their own, but that brings a huge weight of expectation. He's a Norwegian international. He's happy to post that his best mates with Odegaard and Haaland. I don't mind any of that because, you know. I love how you went Odegaard before Haaland. Was the shift well, between Arsenal and Man City now. <laughs> well, yeah, I, w I wouldn't necessarily pick it that way around if I were picking a team. But is, and then you get interest from clubs like Chelsea. So fans of our club will... A split, I think. A lot of them will say we're giving him massively unfair stick. He's, he's doing things that you're not seeing. He's contributing in more ways than people realise. But just to the naked eye, he's, he's not pulling his weight all the time in, in these games. And, and it may be skewed because we've seen him play to a much higher level than he is currently. But I don't think it's unfair to say we need more from him at the moment. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think you uh, you hit the nail on the head there for a second because I think sometimes, and when you listen to championship fans talk about him like he's one of the best players in the league, these people have not seen him week in, week out. So we're looking at Illiman and I thinking he's probably way, way, way streets ahead of Sanderberger right now. Um, but probably just the fact that he's there, he's got that name, he's got that stature as well because he's such a big lad. I think that probably a lot of teams watch him and think he's the man that we need to stop. And that probably helps other players come into the game and maybe show their worth. But you're absolutely sure. right in saying that he's not been uh, at the levels that we expect. But how do we get the best out of Sanderberger? I think that's clear. I think it's it's been seen when he's further forward, he's much more effective. And it hasn't worked every time because he's still had poor games this season when he's been playing further forward. But I think the recent game against Hull, he was much more effective than he has been when he's been playing deeper. He plays in a completely different system to Norway, uh, to, for Norway than he does for us, obviously. And it's a little bit like Anel in terms of how he's had to adapt how he plays, being asked to bring the ball further forward. Sanders had to shift his game as well and sort of work on skills that he might not have focused on previously. So further forward, he's much more effective, does a different job for Norway completely in terms of He's a bit. He's not particularly a Norwood, but from what I've seen, he sits more in a holding position and sort of likes to take possession and, and build from deep. We're a much stronger pressing team. We like to get forward quickly. Norwood pinging it and switching from side to side. So for us, I think he's better in that right attacking midfielder role, if you like, rather than sort of right centre midfielder slash central defensive midfielder. I think that's much where he's much more effective. Would you say that if Makati plays and if Eliminidai plays and um, you're looking for one defensive slash central midfielder to sit next to Norwood, you'd rather see Sander on the bench than him playing. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, you'd rather see Doyle in there and Sander on the bench. 
Are you, saying, are you saying attacking midfield or nothing? That's the question. Yeah, I am. I don't think Hecky is. I think Hecky would no, rather him play. Um, but for me, I'm not saying you're benching for McAtee because I think Sanders, well, they've both got great natural ability. Sanders obviously more developed and further on in his in his footballing career, but there'll be games where you can play them both with Norwood as a holder on his own, probably against your weaker teams that we're expecting to to dominate, if you like. We're going to have to be more sensible against the better teams when I think Tommy Doyle and Norwood have shown they can play together now in that deeper role. Although Tommy Doyle naturally likes to play further forward, we've heard, and he's, he can be effective there as well. So McAtee's come into his own post-World Cup, so I can't count him out. If you'd have asked me before the break then McAtee sits on bench while Sanders playing all day long. But I think James McAtee's really come into his own and it just highlights how strong the squad is really when we can sort of look to those things. The one thing it will do, hopefully, is push Sander into form. I know Hecky's trying to play him into form, but if you know you've got people like McAtee behind you chomping at your heels, you know, the, McAtee got left out at Hull and he'd done nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. He's been playing so well. But we can rotate because of the strength of the squad. So if Sander continues to have poor games, and he'll try and play him back into form because of what an asset he is to us. But there's always the option of McAtee if, um, if Sander's not doing the business. A fully fit, informed Sander Berger dominates at this level. So if we can get him anywhere close for this really difficult running that's coming, then it's going to be a huge asset for us and, and a huge step forward towards achieving that goal that we're all wanting, isn't it? If we don't go up, I'd sell Sander. If we do go up, I'd try and keep him because I think he'll be a better performer at Premier League level, if I'm honest, when he's more time on the ball. and cause at, at the moment, he's, he's a bit of a, not a luxury player because he does graft, but I think he's, he's very classy on the ball and he wouldn't get harried as much and he'd have a little bit more time and he's a bit more cultured. So I think it'd be nice to see him in, in uh, the Premier League for Sheffield United when he's now used to the system. And I, again, I don't want to talk about Elliman because I think, I think he's gone in somewhere, if I'm honest, but... Hopefully it's with a promotion under our belt. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. The thing is, no, we're not going to talk about Illumin. We're not going to talk about Illumin. We don't want anybody to come in with any no. wild bids. And, uh, it's rubbish. It's rubbish, isn't it? Rubbish. It's so bad. So, yeah. so bad. Not Don't get any assists or goals no. this season. People no, really no. need to do the research. Or not That's right. Research. <laughs> anyway, I think we're, uh, we're all good there. I want, to, I want to see Sander in the Premier League with us. That's what you finished off by saying. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. No problem.